Today we have a landscape to transform and an iron farm to build. Let's get working on the empire. What is what is he doing? Why are you in here? This this is the tools. You're supposed to be over there. Why did you quit? You have a job to do. No, get. You're not supposed to be in there. Bruno. Is Bruno. What? Why are you all trying to get in the boat? All right, I just want. Can you go? Go away. No. Get out of the boat. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Get you get in the boat. What? Why is this happening? Ow! Ow! No! Ah! The start to this episode could not go any worse. <laughs> Oh, we need a new villager now. Good thing we didn't name him yet. All right, so where are we going to put the iron farm? I kind of feel like since the raid farm's over here, like out in this direction is the way I want to go. But I want to keep things from being seen from the, from like the main area though, because I don't want a lot of eyesores. Like I'll probably even eventually get rid of this maybe once I feel like I've gotten enough out of it and I don't need anything else from there. So maybe we like tuck in behind one of these mountains around here. I'm thinking this one over here because it puts me close to water and there's some things I probably want to build over water like a fish farm or general mob farm maybe or something like that. So let's check out this direction. Hmm, while it's not ideal, the, the area looks kind of looks kind of cool. This might make like over through here like a good industrial district like area, right? Like where we can have a couple things over the water. Um, I have mesa and like sand and stuff right here where I can dig things out. There's lots of trees through here that I can just clear out for wood easily without having to regrow. And this area right here is flat enough and you can't see it from way over there. So maybe I could put my iron farm somewhere right in here. I changed my mind slightly. I'm closer to the water. There's water several blocks under here. So I'm hoping we don't hit it because we're going to go underground at least a touch. But not too far so i think this area will work i'm gonna kind of just like make it a little bit more workable we'll get rid of some of the trees we'll flatten out some of the big like hills and things like that and i think this place will work fine all right so i've kind of marked out the size of the iron farm here this is going to be the spawning platform area and it's big enough to where when we have the beds underneath it doesn't matter what bed becomes the center bed because the, the whole area will be inside of the spawning range for iron golems anyways. And I think we're going to dig, I think we're going to dig, I don't know, maybe like six blocks or so down from here. That'll give us room to put the beds underneath. It'll give us room to have the villagers underneath where they'll be nice and safe and tucked away from any mobs out here in the area. And uh, we will be doing the traditional method of making this a trading hall as well. And I think I'm going to have librarians here that way at least mostly librarians. That way we can have all the trades that we need to easily gear back up in the event that I meet my untimely demise. So I'm going to go ahead and dig this area out really quick and uh, we'll get to, you know, building the platform and placing the beds and all the great stuff there. There's something I haven't quite thought of. I, I don't have wool. I don't have a way to get wool to get beds. Um, I need a sheep. That one sheep won't do. I need two sheep. One sheep, two sheep, red sheep, blue sheep. I don't care what color it is. Just somebody find me some sheep. No, it despawned. It literally just spawned like five seconds ago. Oh my gosh. Now we only have one. I don't have any way to lure it. I'm not very well prepared. You do not despawn. Do not despawn. I'll be back. And, and he despawned. Why does nobody listen to me? I, I finally got sheep down here and I was literally breeding the sheep and this dude appeared right in front of me. He literally, <laughs> he, he spawned in the pen. Well, Blackie, I guess I got to keep you. Yeah, you're going to stay here. Okay, platform, platform's done. Sheep, they're, they're still eating grass. I need more, I think. Uh, this up here is platform where the beds are going to go 
we'll end up taking all this out at the bottom. But basically our beds, we're just going to put them into like a circular pattern here. I think this thing goes out one, two, three, four. So four blocks in each direction from a center like single hole. And we will eventually come up here and just kind of place them like this. We'll replace, move over, place, etc. I'm going to do that in a second here. I don't know why I'm showing you because I'm about to show you with actual beds here in a moment. And I have chambers for villagers to go into. So I think the plan it's going to be a little chaotic at first. Basically, we're going to place beds down. We're going to find villagers. We're going to bring villagers over. Uh, we're just going to shut them in here and let them breed. And then I think what we'll do is we'll just place like profession blocks at the back of each one of these little areas here. Just so like the villagers, they come up, they'll come into their little area and then we'll we'll find some way to trap them in. I, I think that's how I'm going to do it. I don't, I don't know. This may change. All right. Let me start actually doing the things. Place a bed, pick block, move. Place a bed, pick block, move. Repeat. Repeat. Before I put all these down, I really should have the villagers in here because they need to link. I really want them to link to the center one is going to be ideal. So I'm, I'm going to rip all these back out, but that's how we're going to do it. Now for the fun part, villagers. Random village has been acquired. Hey, hey, you come here, come here. Get it. There we go. Okay. Where's your friend? I saw him down here somewhere. Hello. I want you in here. Oh, did I not? I don't think I brought a lead. I'll have to go back and get a lead. Stop walking away. I need you over here, please. Why? Well, don't know. Don't go down there. Hey, okay. hi. How you doing? Welcome to the boat. Hop in. Can I get in the boat? No. There we go. Okay, we got them both here. So, this is very dangerous. Lead. We need to go that way. Quite a ways. So, this is where hopefully, hopefully Bedrock Edition does not let me down. Because we should just be able to pillar up super high. And then slowly glide over. If you go too fast, make any sudden movements. These guys, well, they're going to meet an unfortunate end. I think we're aiming for somewhere right over there. Let's see if we can make it the whole way. All right, come on, guys. Let's go. All right, again, don't get going too fast. Ow. Ah, that hurt me. Oh, yeah, this is good. Here, oh, oh, easy. Easy. Slow it down. Slow it down. Oh, 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 no. Bye, have a great time. Oh, and that... That did not work out too well. Attempt number two, back at our original village, much closer. Let's see if this works. Okay, I don't quite remember exactly where it is. Over there? Or over there? I guess let's try this again. Take number two, keeps us consistent speed, hopefully splash down in water somewhere. No clue where it is, no clue where it is, no clue where it is, they're still attached. We're still attached. Slow down ever so slightly. Oh, no, 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 no. It's about to turn nighttime. I have no clue where it is. This is not good. All right, we got to get away for zombie spawn there. Go, go, go. Oh, it's right here. I'm close. And we made it. Time to get these guys underground. I got a lot of breeding to do. I think we have a lot of baby villagers. All right, we got lots of grown villagers here. We have a little storage system here. No sorter, only two items drop here. Not really that big of a deal, right? So uh, we are now going to get this thing all set up to start killing some golems, and then we'll get it set up to start spawning some golems. First things first, let's get this guy out the way. Let's chop this out. Let's connect our hopper down here. All right, first, I want to set a slab at this level right here. And then we are going to put a sign on top of that slab right at this level like that. We don't need to type anything on it like I just did. And what we're going to do is we're going to surround that sign on all sides to hold some lava. Now that it can hold lava on top, we need to be able to contain the lava. So what we're going to do is gonna come out to the side, go up. Did I get that? No. Get one on top right here, like so. And then we just need to circle all the way around. 
and boom. So what should happen is I need to get my lava bucket, place it right there. Perfect. So now iron golems, they're going to flow into here once we get the water in, which is going to be the next phase is we need to get get the water in. And for this part, we just need to make water flow going down here. And we're going to put water on top of this block and then all across all the sides, except for the little corners beside the raised block. And just to make infinite water sources easy to do, I've gone ahead and put up a little barrier. So now as I go through, I'll have an infinite water source all the way down. And then I can just remove this, uh, this dirt after the fact. Just a little way to make it a little bit easier to do all of the watering. All right. And to make sure that none of our villagers can get out of here easily, let's go ahead. Let's place this down. Let's put our door right here. Cover this, cover this guy over like so. And I, I only made one button. We, we definitely need a button to get in and out, but to get in. And button to get out. Perfect. Now you guys, we need to start getting you professions and I don't quite know. I don't quite know how I'm going to do this yet. Let's experiment. OK, I think I have the process. This is actually easier than I thought. So I used to always do the trick where I trap them in their pods first, put down the lectern or whatever it is, and then you like look around frantically and see who links to what. And you have to take the lectern back up and go over and, you know, place it back down in front of the right one. And sometimes you don't see it and you have to do it multiple times. That's that's a chore. It's a bit of a chore when I could just do this and let's see. Watch. Let's see if I actually do it this time. Oh, every single time I've placed one, they go and they jump on top of it immediately. And then I could just do this and trap them in so I can block off this back area, place a lectern right here. Somebody's good. This isn't supposed to happen. You get out. Get out, get out. Okay. Can you go? This is a private area. No, nope. this way. Yeah, there we go. Okay, it was still pretty easy. Um, I can see they're going to get in the way periodically. But overall, this isn't too bad. It shouldn't take long to link them all up. Okay, this, this did not take long at all. Maybe 30 minutes? Less? Maybe less than that? To get them all in. They're all linked up properly. We have iron golems dying up there too, although I did mess up the signs. So I got to adjust that. Um, but look, uh oh, we got supplies falling in here too. Some cat string as well, but we got iron, everybody. We got iron. We're going to be able to AFK here a long time. Get iron for days. Also go through and set all of our trades. I'm not going to set the trades right now, though. I think actually it's about time we step away from here and we need to go do a little bit of terraforming. OK, I'm ready to get started. We need to figure out exactly how we're going to do this, though, because we have a house over here. It's kind of off the beaten path a little bit compared to right here. Right. And I don't have any specific plans on exactly how things are going to lead to each other. I think we're going to do it more naturally, like as we create buildings, we're just going to tie them together. And then if there ends up being some sort of central point between them, then maybe we'll do something with that area. And then later on, once we have a lot more buildings, paths can change, right? We can always switch them up. Right now, we're early developments. So we don't even need fancy pathing. We don't need uh, stone and everything to be nice and structured. We just need the two to connect together and it look like that these two guys communicate with each other. The family that lives here, the family that lives there, like they interact in some way. And then this comes out the side. And really a natural path seems like it would kind of go maybe through here because you're going to take like the shortest the shortest way to get from point A to point B, right? And I think this would kind of be the way to go. All right, now we've kind of peeled this back a little bit. I think it's time to connect the pass. And I think we're just going to kind of walk it and then hold down our shovel or just kind of randomly click it around a little bit just to kind of get a path started. We need to knock up like all the grass, get all this stuff out the way. We don't need any of that. We'll add that in after the fact. And eventually we lead ourselves right over here to the front door of the other house, which, by the way, I've seen that villager like floating around over there somewhere. And he wasn't linked to this profession block still, so I don't quite understand what his deal is. We'll get him over there, though. No problem. And oh, this reminds me, you guys have given me names. I've been given names for him. I think we'll add in some spruce slabs as like transition pieces to go from one level to the next. That way our villagers don't have to jump. 
Next, I think we'll fill in with more path blocks. And then we want to texture it up a little bit. We'll leave some grass here and there, I think. But I also want to mix in some coarse dirt. So I think what we'll do is just kind of plop some random holes around. Some of them connected like that. Some of them little single ones like this. We'll do some off the path, plenty of them on the path. And then this will give us a nice texture to the, the pathway to make it look and feel a lot more alive. Now that we got some detailing in, I want to go through and I want to add in some trees. And we're not going to do any like custom trees at this time. So uh, we're just going to bring in some like, regular oak trees here. I want to make sure I space them out good. And one thing I've learned from seeing other creators do this is you do want to create sight lines. So at some point while walking down here, I would like to be able to see the house right here. So I'm trying to think of like, when does it first come into view? And that's right here, right? So I don't want to block that area. So I'm thinking if we put, I don't know, maybe a tree right there, we're going to have that temporary vision once these two trees grow up. Also, rather than just going with one tree type, you know, I think about woods, at least in the area where I live, forests and that sort of thing. Usually they're going to have like a variety of different trees in them. So I don't see any real reason to have some sort of a dominant uh, tree that's in the area. We can mix things up. We can have a few different ones. We can have some oak. We can have some spruce. We can have some birch. Um, I know some of you won't like the fact that we're going to have some birch, but it's going to be here and you'll just have to get over it. OK, the connecting path is looking pretty good. I think I think I'm at a point where I, I want to call it quits on the path. Um, as you can see, like we get a good hint of the house here as we go by. You get like a good peek of it right here. And in this house right here, if you're coming the other way, you get like a decent peek of it the whole time enough to like bring your eye in and make you interested. But you never really get to see the full thing until you get close, which I kind of like too. it gives you enough to be interested, but it leaves a bit of mystery as well. So I kind of like what we've accomplished with the pathing here. It's my first time really going through this process on my own of creating sight lines with pathing between two different like builds. And I think we've accomplished it pretty well uh, now. I need to find a resident of that house. Where is he at? OK, I see him back there. Is this let's see, is this close enough for him to? Oh, it's about to turn nighttime. See, look, it's it's past time for them to work. We're going to have to wait for these guys to sleep and wake up. OK, here he is. We got him. OK, so now if I break this, I should be able to move it down. Have him come over again and again. No. And he got too far away. Come back. Come back. Over here. Get back here. Hello. Oh, there you are. So I looked back at the viewer comments and I got a really good one asking me to name him Tim the Tool Man. For those of you that grew up watching 90s TV, you'll know Tim the Tool Man Taylor, but we have a little spin on that. We have Tim the Toolsmith Man right here. Tim. I hope you do a good job for the kingdom. We need to make sure we have plenty of crops growing and we need good tools to do it. Sir, thank you for serving the empire. OK, lastly here, I really want to take care of the properties of the two houses we have so far to make them feel a little more complete. We kind of we threw in some trees, we bone meal some grass, but overall still looking pretty plain. We don't have we don't have flower beds. We don't have leafy goodness all over the place. And we don't have moss, which I, I, I could have swore I got a piece of moss from somewhere, but I haven't seen it since. So apparently we're going to need to find moss again. Don't know if I'm going to be able to do that now or not, but I want to add just a little bit of extra color and life to this area without look, making it look too overgrown. So, yeah, I think we're going to start placing down some blocks. And now I believe everything is looking Absolutely spectacular. I did a little bit more work on the path here. It's kind of filling in the area. We did some bone meal action. We got some stuff set up around the house here. Tim, the toolsmith man, Taylor is running around. I don't know why he's not working, but he's not. And everything around here is looking pretty good. We still got some torch spam going on. That's something I'll I'll resolve with time. But I have one more thing I want to do before we finish out the episode. That one more thing is look for a horse. So while we look let's talk about the series going forward a little bit. So we're going to keep with this empire for a little while longer. I want to get a solid start over here. I want to feel like we have some form of civilization going before we move over to the second empire. 
I want you guys to start thinking about a name for our first empire here. I'm wanting something Minecraft related. Think of uh, some like offshoot name of a type of block. Something that will fit in with the way our empire is taking shape and things that we're using or things that exist in the area. So I don't expect to make a decision on this right now. And that's fine. We don't need to. But just start thinking about it, like pay attention to things that are going on. And if you have a suggestion, make it because at some point, one of your suggestions is going to hit me as being just like spectacular and I have to use it. Um, also, I'm super excited about what we're going to be doing here soon, too, because after we get the second empire started up, which shouldn't take too long, we're going to start building our armies and we're going to make them fight each other. And let's just say, I don't remember if I've mentioned this in a previous episode or not, but let's just say some damage is going to be done, right? I'm thinking of actually blowing up portions of some of our builds, outposts and walls, and maybe even buildings and structures that we have. And then we'll have to come through and repair them. We'll have to take some materials that we have on hand and fix them back up, patch them up. And they may not look exactly the same as before they were blown up, right? Because that's kind of how it, it works sometimes. You don't always have the exact same materials available or the, the materials don't match up or whatever the case may be. So we cannot find any horses here. So it's going to like tell a story in the world as these as these builds progress and go, they're going to change. They're going to change with the war that's coming to the lands here, to the kingdom. Also, that's another thing I just thought of. We need a name for the actual like world. Now, I'm not talking about the file name of the world. This is the survival empire, but we, the, the world itself needs an actual name. So if you have suggestions for names of the world, something really cool that kind of like invites a lot of lore on its own, let me know down in the comment section below. For now, I'm going to keep looking around for a horse because I can't seem to find one. Sun setting. I found a horse. He likes me. Uh, we need to. Can, how do I? There we go. We put a saddle on him. Hop on. Ooh, he's pretty quick, too. OK, I like this. All right. We need to take our horse over to our base because this is the first horse that's going in our stable. Oh, look at his jump, too. Wow. OK, this is actually. Oh, this thing is attached to my head again. This is some type of bug with RTX mode. Well, here we go. We got our first horse here. Let's pop him in. Close him up. And this is a good horse. He's quick. He's got a good jump. He's got a lot of health, too. So I want to know, which should we name our new horse companion? Please let me know down in the comment section below. But for now, we're going to go ahead and we're going to call this day done. I appreciate everybody hanging out. If you enjoyed the video, click the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time. Bye.